This time around, the top comment is about someone that there's actually a lot to talk about, Longtail. Something that comes up about Longtail that isn't really character relevant but is important anyways is what color he is. According to the website Family Tree, which is apparently ultimate indisputable word of God or something, he is silver with black stripes. According to the books, he's either silver or brown. But according to SSS Warrior Cats, he's yellow with black stripes. And if you look up Longtail for any reason, overwhelmingly the depiction is at least inspired by the one that came from SSS Warrior Cats. He is most recognizable as someone who was at least somewhat yellow, which is fascinating. The fandom for this series has way more influence over each other's designs than the text does, and it's been that way forever. Longtail is a bit of a popular character when it comes to Warrior Cat supporting cast, and there's a few reasons for this. The first is, obviously, that he's a first arc character. Your average first arc character is, like, a million times more popular than a character from a later series, and that compounds the later the series happened. The kind of attention first arc characters that are nothing more than their deaths, like Running Wind or Whitethroat get, compared to actual prominent fleshed out characters from later arcs is huge. And this is for an easy reason, the first arc is accessible and rereadable, it's what brings people back to the series, and usually people start there, or at least circle back after reading the first two books of Omen of the Stars and going, what the heck is going on here? Its cast is small, relatively speaking, it's actually pretty large compared to any other given book. And you know the personalities of most of the cats in the clan, so in a way, the character who hasn't done anything at all stands out even more. Longtail, however, is not a character who does nothing at all. He has a lot going for him. Longtail starts out Arc 1 as an antagonist. Rusty needs to fight him to prove himself, and for a long while it seems like he's an ally of Tigerstar as akin to Greystripe. But despite everything, it turns out he's still a loyal warrior. Later on, he's blinded by a rabbit in between books and retires early to the Elder's Den. Then later, in Arc 4, he's crushed by the branches of a falling tree. Longtail is a highlight of the first arc, but I've always simultaneously considered him a bit of a missed opportunity. Warrior Cat shies away from redemption arcs, and seems to subscribe to an idea that if someone is good, they're good, and if they're bad, they're bad. But Longtail avoids this idea somewhat. He's antagonistic and vitrolic towards Firestar for being a kitty pet, but still eventually learns to respect and trust him over time. Likewise, Fireheart over time earns the respect of all of his clanmates, but in Warrior Cats, especially the first arc, even though we know Fireheart and Cloudtail are just as capable as their clanmates, the kitty pet xenophobia of the clan cats never really goes away. Despite these two characters proving themselves, and there being no in-universe evidence that kitty pets or cats without clan blood are less capable, all elements of the clan cat's lives and structure in regards to kitty pets is never actively challenged. So overcoming that prejudice is forever treated as if Firestar and Cloudtail are exceptions to a rule about kitty pets by their clan mates despite everything, which kind of dilutes the impact of them winning them over at all. Because of this, Longtail showing his loyalty to Firestar isn't really about overcoming prejudice, but instead showcasing that he's more loyal to his clan than he is loyal to his presumed friend, Tigerstar, which, which is fine, but I really wish that they pushed it further. Longtail's a character that's introduced early, and I feel like he fades into the background pretty quickly after rejecting the plan to join Tigerstar. I, I feel like the best conclusion to his arc would have involved him being close to Firestar, ideally as the person he eventually makes deputy, as opposed to Greystripe. In the mind of the concept of Aaron Hunter, Longtail is a character who was always a good person. He wasn't a bad person who became better, or someone who even needed a redemption arc at all. He was a, by their definition, good person who hated kitty pets, who learned not to hate this specific kitty pet, which is more disappointing than the former idea from a character writing perspective. Likewise, a character like Breeze Pelt wasn't a bad person, he was a misunderstood, edgy, good person who just didn't get enough love, but now he does, so he's fine. <laughs> like, I know that sounds absolutely convoluted and silly, but that's the way he's been written. He was initially written as an antagonist who didn't feel any remorse for what he did, and then they switched gears to, no, actually, he's just a misunderstood good guy. And that's all I'll say about Breeze Pelt, but he's an example of this, this mindset. They're either good or they're bad. They're not changing. Uh, they're to say, like, no, he wasn't a bad person, you just didn't understand he was a good person, as opposed to having any character development. And this kind of pattern that we see with, like, 
non-redemption redemption arcs. It's something we see with characters like Needletail and Clear Sky, where it's no, no, they were misunderstood. You see, they they're not really making any steps to get better. They just are better. Therefore implying that they were better the whole time without ever actually experiencing any character development. Anyway, back on track to the deputy thing. Graystripe had just come back to ThunderClan after leaving to join RiverClan for moons. The books intend him rejoining ThunderClan as a show of his loyalty, but while I can't speak for everyone, I've always felt his position as deputy was greatly unearned. He didn't even train his own apprentice. Meanwhile, to see someone like Longtail, who stayed loyal to ThunderClan even when he had full opportunity to leave with Tigerstar, even when he was being led by a kitty pet, to be granted that kind of position is just so much cooler and more satisfying. It's, it's this display of, like, I trust you, you know? And Longtail earned that trust. He stayed in ThunderClan, he backed up Ty Firestar, and Graystripe didn't stay in ThunderClan. Graystripe did what Graystripe wanted to do. He even had an opportunity to fight to keep his kits in ThunderClan, a, a fight that ThunderClan could have very well won, and he didn't do that. He went to RiverClan. He chose to do so. And it's not like ThunderClan-RiverClan relations could have gotten any worse at that point. But consider the potential parallel here. He Longtail fights Firestar when he first arrives in the forest. To see him loyally supporting him in the very end, I, I love that sort of thing. And I know Graystripe also fights Firestar, but it's not very serious. It's like a little kitty pet scuffle. But this isn't what we get out of Longtail, and to be fair, even without a grand conclusion of any sort, his presence in the first arc is pretty strong. Now, I might have missed something, but from what I can tell in the new prophecy on the subject of Longtail's blindness, it's only listed as having begun to fail, and there's an implication that he had gone blind for more of a health reason than an injury-related one. That said, later during Arc 3, the book Firestar's Quest implies that he lost his sight to his scratching rabbit. From what I understand, this is a retcon, but a commonly accepted one. His eyes become infected from apparently filthy rabbit claws, and even though he can see a little at first, his eyesight fades quickly. Within Firestar's quest, Longtail quickly becomes self-deprecating about the blindness, but Firestar insists to him that he'll always have a place in the clan no matter what happens. He needs to forgo his apprentice, Sootpaw, because of his infected eyes, and Sootpaw is given to Thornclaw. This is the second apprentice Longtail loses to something other than being made a warrior, the first being Swiftpaw, who he lost to the dogs. He seems more concerned with Sootpaw having a mentor than this, even though he mentions that he'll never train an apprentice again. He's not mentioned after this point at all in Firestar's quest. The time following this is covered a little bit in Graystripe's vow, which by the end he has recovered enough to participate in Graystripe's plan but we don't see him become an elder. My hope is that becoming an elder was his choice. I don't think that there's anything wrong with him deciding that it's time to, uh, time to retire because he's gone blind. I think that everybody has different levels of things that they can handle um, when it comes to situations like that. So if he decides that it's time for him to retire, then it's time for him to retire. I really hope that it wasn't a forced situation on any level. Like most things that are off-screen in Warrior Cats, I'm going to assume that the best possible thing happened instead of the worst possible thing. This is because I have the power to do so with the interpretation of the text. Something bad could have happened, yes, but instead we can assume that something a lot better happened instead. Imagining a situation in which Longtail has agency. While most of the older cats stay behind when it's time to find a new territory, Longtail comes along despite his blindness. The books still consider him a younger cat and capable of making the journey when cats like Dappletail supposedly don't have the strength. To be honest, leaving the elders behind always kind of rubbed me the wrong way. There's this implication that they're choosing to die here, which is uncomfortable to think about, especially considering that we know these cats wouldn't be seeking out two legs to take care of them thanks to the warrior code. In the middle of the second arc, Mousefur becomes an elder too, despite being called a young warrior in the arc before. While throughout Arc 3, Mousefur and Longtail are a bit of a duo, Longtail's main companion throughout Arc 2 is actually Goldenflower, Brambleclaw's mom. She's the only other elder for a good chunk of it, and I think the idea that they're friends is actually kind of sweet. Coming from here, we're switched over to reading to Longtail from J-Paw's perspective. J-Paw is not kind to him, to say the least. He also finds it unfair that Longtail is in the Elder's Den when he's so young, but he's more than willing to call in nasty things in his head and a second-rate warrior. 
He also ignores him and considers him fretting over Mouse for overblown until, in the end, realizing he was trying to tell him something important all along. But this is all much more J-Paw problems than anything to do with Longtail as a person. They make a mention of how he doesn't like to leave camp, and it really seems like retiring was, if anything, his choice, again. As Power of Three goes on, however, he starts getting a little more active and comfortable. He even gets excited about the idea of fighting and traveling again. Like I mentioned before, over the course of the third series, he becomes very close with Mousefur, when that doesn't seem to be the case beforehand. He takes care of her and he looks out for her. They enjoy each other's company. Around Book 5, j detects him feeling guilty about not participating in the battle that takes place in Eclipse, but j again thinks of him as pitiable for it. Not to bring up j problems again, but it's kind of unfortunate that we never get a resolution for how negatively j thinks about him. Does his internal not monologue really need to be insisting Longtail is useless every time he sees him? The narrative and internal monologue never refers to Mouse Fur as someone burdensome, even though she's not contributing any more or less than Longtail is. Even after Longtail is consistently helping him during Sunrise, he never stops to go, hmm, maybe I was too hard on this guy. Okay, enough J-pop problems, but kid, please, some character development? J-Feather uses Longtail's knack for memorizing scents to try and identify an herb as part of a bigger investigation in Sunrise. He eventually finds it, but what it is becomes a bigger mystery. It's unrelated to Longtail, though. He's just good at smelling. Gotta go read the book if you want to find out about J-Feather's herb goose chase. By the time the fourth series comes around, Longtail is mentioned to actually be starting to get old. This makes sense, as Longtail was a full warrior back when the series started. He's also mentioned to be skipping meals and giving his extra food and water to Mousefur during the drought. In Fading Echoes, when a tree falls on Thunderclan camp, Longtail foregoes evacuating immediately to force Mousefur to leave. But Mousefur, not understanding the gravity of the situation, was hard to move. Just when she's seem seemingly getting along, Mousefur turns back to try and save some food. Longtail runs back to get it for her, and Briarpaw runs to try and stop him. Both of them are crushed inside the Elder's Den by the branches of the tree. Briarpaw survives, but Longtail dies. His body is mentioned to be skinny and light, and it makes me wonder if he was weak because he was still giving his meals to Mousefur. Not as an explanation as to why he died, trees are heavy and Cat being well-fed or not is not going to make much of a difference, but up until the end of his life, he was looking out for her, even though he was getting older as well. Jay Feather later meets Longtail in Star Clan, where he asks about Mousefur and Briarlight. He also joins his clan mates as a Star Clan warrior in the battle against the Dark Forest. He tries to save Mousefur from attacking warriors, but he's too late. And that's where everything runs out on Longtail. He's got a lot going on, partially because he fills so many roles a possible antagonist, a loyal warrior, a young elder. He's interesting and well-rounded. He's very popular and with good reason. He's got a good character and a sea of interchangeable toms. You don't need to read into him to find character traits like you do a lot of others. He's defined without ever having a point of view to himself. He does also show up in a field guide story where uh, Darkstripe convinces him to eat food while on patrol and then they come back and an elder dies horribly. And he's like, oh no, had I not eaten that food, the elder wouldn't have died horribly. It's in the Code of the Clans book as, a, as an example story. But... Uh, it's so disconnected from the main narrative of the books that it's just kind of like, hmm. Not that relevant, so I didn't mention it. But I figure I will anyway, so nobody thinks I forgot it. It just kind of serves to, to push the Longtail was always a good person, he just had bad friends kind of narrative that the first arc has. Okay, and assuming you haven't quote-unquote won this before, um, comment the cat you want me to talk about next down below, and if your comment gets the most upvotes on YouTube, I will do a video about them next. As long as it's not a cat on this list, these are very lightly researched videos, and I don't want to have to get into too dramatic a topic with one of them. Anyway, see you next time!